We're going to draw the Lewis structure of tin to chloride. Now, tin is a metal and chlorine is a non-metal. But if you look up tin to chloride, you'll find that in the gas phase, it is actually a molecule. This is a molecular structure. That means that tin and chlorine are going to share electrons, despite the fact that you probably think metals plus nonmetals always make ionic compounds. Again, you can verify this on Wikipedia or whatever. SNCl2 in the gas phase is a molecular compound. We're going to draw this the same way we, we would draw like carbon dioxide or, uh, I don't know, beryllium difluoride or something like that, or water, I guess. Tin is in group 14, and so we're going to say it has four valence electrons before it starts sharing. And then chlorine is in group 17 of the periodic table, so it brings seven valence electrons each. Now there are two of them, so that's 14 plus the extra four, which makes 18 electrons that we're gonna have to deal with in the structure. Now the way I draw my structures is to put my central atom in the center and then surround it with the outer atoms. There's two chlorines. Then I connect the outer atoms to the central atom because if they weren't bonded, it wouldn't be a molecule. This is two, four electrons that I've already dealt with. Now I'm going to complete the octet on the outer atoms um, because the, each of the chlorines needs eight electrons in its outer shell, but I can only count up to 18 electrons total because that's all I'm allowed to deal with here. Again, I have two, four already drawn. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Complete octet. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Complete octet. Great. Now I still have two extra electrons to deal with because this was 16 that I've put down and I need 18. What I do with extra electrons is I dump them on the center atom. So there you go, this tin has a lone pair of electrons. The chlorines have a uh, complete octet. This tin does not have a complete octet, but it's a, it doesn't need a complete octet for this structure. And uh, this is it, this is actually the Lewis structure for SNCl2. If you were gonna draw the Vesper shape for this, this is one, two, three things around it, but uh, the lone pair doesn't take up space, so it's a bent shape. You can verify that that's true as well, and there's one lone pair on the tin. I've drawn it the way it is in real life. If your teacher for some reason demands an ionic structure, then what you're gonna have to do is start with your SN with, huh, well, I think it should be one, two, three, four valence electrons. Uh, it's gonna be so tough to do because there's a lone pair on tin, unless you don't know that that exists. If your teacher's demanding an ionic structure for this, I want you to start with tin having two valence electrons because that's the valence of tin if you're gonna consider this ionic. Then, you draw your chlorines with seven valence electrons around them. See, because they bring seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you have to show the transfer of electrons from the metal to the non-metal. I cannot stress enough, this is not the real structure for tin to chloride once you actually look into it. So if your teacher's demanding that, you should set them straight. Anyways, this is the complete Lewis structure. We did it together. Best of luck.